Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Red Dead Online and we're doing another ability card build video. Today we're going to be doing the best turtled or kind of hidey hole hunkered down sniper build that I've been able to come up with. And now I use this build decently frequently. I wouldn't want to call it my perfect sniper griefing build because that suggests that I do a lot of griefing. But I will say that it's good at that. So if that's something that you're looking for then this is the video for you. But it's also great for any other turtled sniper application that could be call to arms or maybe legendary bounties or basically any anything where you find yourself hunkered down behind cover trying to take out a lot of enemies or just really dangerous enemies from long range. And so basically the goal of this guide is to make you a nice high damage sniper that also takes very little damage so it's hard to kill you. So that's the goal of this build and like all these builds I've designed an outfit to go with it and three specific weapons that I think helps this build be as effective as possible in any application. So we're going to start with weapons then the outfit and then we're going to go to the ability cards themselves and I'll explain why the outfit and the weapons and everything is the way that it is and why it makes it such an effective sniper build. If you find yourself enjoying this video or find it useful at any point along the line definitely stop take the time to like the video and subscribe to the channel because you're helping me out immensely and it just makes sense to like and subscribe to content that you actually find yourself enjoying so with all that in mind let's just start it off with the weapons so the first weapon that we're going to be focusing on here is probably the most important for the build and since it's a sniper build it's going to be a sniper rifle and there are two sniper rifles in the game you have the Carcano rifle which is the one I'm showing you here and the rolling block rifle either one of these rifles is going to work it really comes down to per personal preference the reason I like the Carcano Arcano better is just because pound for pound it's a better weapon in my opinion. It's got super high range and accuracy just like the rolling block. It's got a much higher ammo capacity to hold six rounds whereas the rolling block only holds one. It's got a super high fire rate because it holds six rounds and it's a semi-automatic rifle and it's got a nice fast reload speed because it's just a detachable box magazine. That means that you can fire for every two rounds the rolling block fires you can fire six plus with the Carcano and that just makes it a much more effective weapon in my opinion. The second weapon we're going to be looking at is a pistol and this is going to be your, your uh, main sidearm weapon, so the one on your right side. And so basically I would recommend either the semi-auto or the Mauser pistol and the reason for that is because it'll give you that uh, mid to mid long, so not long range and not really short range as much, but a decent advantage in that mid to mid long range for when they get too close to shoot with your sniper rifle. So a lot of people, especially people who love sniping in this game, will insist that even at short range the sniper rifle is the best weapon. It's not. I constantly get in too close and kill snipers when I'm using something else. It's the best way to take on someone who's set up to snipe. So this build in particular is tries to, I try to balance it off with the weapons mostly to make it so you're not totally defensive, at, uh, defenseless at close range. But it's really, really only the most effective build you can go with if you're focusing on long range combat. And the third and final weapon I recommend is the soft off shotgun and I just have the Krampus variant on here it really doesn't matter what it looks like it's really about what it does and the reason I like this is because I don't like having two long arm weapons on this build I like it being just a sniper so that's why I just have a sniper on the back obviously if that doesn't bother you at all it'd be great to include maybe a repeater or a bolt action or Springfield rifle or even a shotgun so you could really specialize in that medium range or the real close range if you use a shotgun but if you are like me and you will like only having the one weapon on the back when you're being a sniper then I think that the sawed off shotgun shotgun is a great offhand weapon because this is going to be excellent for those situations where someone does manage to get real close or maybe the spot that you decided to turtle in was inside a building and now someone got inside that building with you once you're inside a building the best weapon to kill someone with is a shotgun and now for a little extra fun something that i'll often do when i'm rocking this build is i will take that sawed off shotgun and i'll either put explosive slugs or the incendiary rounds in it. and that makes it especially deadly when someone actually manages to get close enough to make your sniper rifle ineffective. So that is why I choose to use the sawed off shotgun as the third weapon. Again, if you don't mind having two weapons on your back, then maybe you put two revolvers on your sidearms or two pistols and you just put a full size pump action or double barrel shotgun on your back. It's up to personal choice, but this is the way that I like to do it. So here we have the outfit in its entirety. And now basically just inspiration wise, what I was going for here is it started out with the attempt. I wanted it to kind of look like a World War II Russian sniper, but then I couldn't really find any clothing that was appropriate for the torso. That was really the the only area that I found lacking because everything else I had 
looking basically just like I wanted it to. But I couldn't find anything appropriate for the torso, so I just abandoned that and went with sort of a early 1900s, maybe late 1800s paramilitary sniper kind of guy. So maybe someone from South America or, you know, working or living in South America or more so the Eastern Bloc in Europe. Something kind of like that is kind of what I'm going for here. So the first item of clothing is the hat, and it's the only one where I'm going to have multiple options. But I chose to use this kind of real dark greenish gray variant of the Annisburg cap. And basically, well, first of all, you need to do the second uh, of the Blood Money Jewel Heists to unlock this, and once you do, you can purchase it from Adam Nazar. So if you haven't done that and you want this hat, that's the way to do it. But this is kind of what inspired the whole outfit because it has a more modern look, almost kind of looks like a modern garrison cap from the United States Army. So that's why I wanted to use it, just because it, it has that sort of paramilitary or military look to it. If you don't have this hat or you don't like how it looks or you don't want to try getting this hat, whatever the case may be, there is an alternative. And that alternative is the Green Union cap. And now this one also serves the purpose or the ability or whatever of making the outfit just look a little bit older. So if you want to do the same sort of outfit but make it look like it came from the 1860s or 1870s, then you pop a green union cap on it and I think the outfit still looks really good but it also makes it look much older and it still maintains the military vibe. So those are the options. I like the Annisburg cap but the union uh, cap also works. For the shirt, I just kept it simple and went with the green variant of the union suit. I chose to include suspenders since I wouldn't be wearing a vest or a coat and the ones I went with were the dark brown fine leather suspenders. I went with the darker brown Minstead gloves, and I believe you buy these from Madame Nazar. Can't say for certain. You might get them from the clothing store, but I think you get them from Madame Nazar. For the weapon equipment, I wanted to keep it pretty plain looking, and I went with the uh, brown gunslinger gun belt and the matching gunslinger holster for the offhand holster for that. And then just to complete that sort of paramilitary look, I included the light tan merino bandolier. Of course, you could go without it. I think it looks fine either way. I just think that this specific bandolier does a good job of really adding to the whole sniper aesthetic. Then for the pants, I went with this uh, light tannish variant of the buckskin pants. I didn't want the whole outfit to just be green because I didn't want it to be that basic. And there is a green variant of these that I think looks fine if you do want to go with the green, you know, the all green. But I think these look really nice. They have that sort of, well, it started out because they looked a lot like the Soviet pants that I was trying to go for, uh, but couldn't quite complete. So that's how it started there. But I just like how it looks with the outfit. So that's the pants. And then finally for the boots, I decided to go with the dark brown and black variant of the hardy boots because, well, they just look like modern combat boots. So they definitely fit the outfit very well. And that is the entire outfit. I think you'll agree that it does a good job of sending a maybe ex-military or paramilitary or pseudo-military, something like that sort of sniper vibe. And I think it also looks very cool. So that's the outfit. Let's move on to the ability cards. So for the abilities, of course, they're all made out of four card builds. And for this one, all four cards are decently important. So the first one is the Deadeye card, and I chose Slow and Steady. And that just says, while Deadeye is active, you take much less damage and headshots do not kill you outright. Taking damage will drain Deadeye and you cannot run or sprint. So the reason why this one is my, in my opinion, the best Deadeye card for this build is A, it's going to, so let's say maybe you take your first shot and you miss and they start shooting at you. The first thing you should do if you're using this card is pop into Deadeye and you're automatically going to start taking less damage and if they manage to hit you in the head, that headshot won't kill you outright. Definitely going to be a great card for you. And the only downside of Slow and Steady is that while in Deadeye, if you have Slow and Steady active, you can't run or sprint. Well, good news, if you're being a turtled sniper and you're camping inside a building or behind a rock or something like that, you shouldn't be running and sprinting anyway, especially not if you're popped into dead eye. So the downside of that really doesn't affect this build, so it makes it just a positive card. If you don't like Slow and Steady, there are two other dead eye cards that work passably well, like I think they work almost as good as Slow and Steady with this build. The first one is going to be Focus Fire, and that says while dead eye is active, you and your team members deal a lot more damage. If more than one member of your team has the ability active, the effects do not stack. So basically for this one, it's just going to be uh, maybe you pop this one on before you start shooting, and then you take your shot. It's just going to give you a damage boost. And if neither of those, those ones work for you, SB is definitely a good choice. It just says while Deadeye is active, enemies are significantly less accurate when shooting at you, and your accuracy is significantly reduced. The rate at which your Deadeye drains is increased. So the reason why this one also works for it is because you can pop on Deadeye, maybe right before you start sniping, or if you miss your shot, you can pop it on just in case you want to try to avoid getting shot by them. It's going to make them much less accurate when shooting at you. It prevents them from locking onto you with painted black. It's going to be real helpful for those things. And also, I don't, far as my tests have shown, I don't think it makes you less accurate when you're shooting through a scope like if you're using a scoped weapon I think it's just when you're shooting unscoped weapons because I've never missed a headshot while I had SB active and was trying to snipe someone so I think that the uh, accuracy debuff only affects unscoped weapons so definitely those three dead eye cards are all options but I personally think slow and steady is the best out of all of them so the first passive card that we're going to be looking at is a damage card and it's sharpshooter so this one just says while using a scope you deal much more damage
damage and take much, much less damage. So this one is two-sided. Obviously, if you're doing a sniper build, Sharpshooter is a no-brainer because it's going to give you a damage boot, uh, buff, especially if you're using the Carcano Rifle because, like I said, it, does, it deals slightly less damage than the Rolling Block. But if you're using Sharpshooter, anytime you're aiming down your scope, you're going to be getting a damage boost, which is going to be good, and that's going to help even the playing field. But this one is also great because it's giving you that defense or that health perk, because now you're going to be taking much less damage when people shoot you while you're aiming. The second passive card that I recommend here is Never Without One, and it says your hat will block one headshot and then fall off. While wearing a hat, you take less damage. While not wearing a hat, you will take more damage. So the only important thing about this one is to make sure that you have a hat on, otherwise you're crippling yourself because you're making yourself take more damage. But if if you have your hat on, this one's going to protect you. If they manage to get in a headshot, it's just going to knock your hat off and you're not going to take the damage. You're not going to die. Well, you'll take some damage. A small amount of damage and your head will knock off, but it won't kill you. So most likely, even if they manage to land a headshot, you're going to be able to kill them, grab your hat, pop a tonic, and you're going to be back to full, full strength and basically unkillable. The third and final passive card is Hunker Down, and in my opinion, it's a seriously underrated card because it, its effects are very useful in a lot of situations. So it says you take much less damage while in cover. So the reason I really like this one, especially for this build, is because you're going to be hunkered down. You're going to be behind cover, whether that's a rock or a wagon or a tree or a building or something like that. If you're in cover, you're going to take less damage with hunker down. So that is why I recommend hunker down. So just as an overview for the entire build, it really makes you hard to peek and kill, which is the whole idea. So peeking is just basically when you pop out, either they'll be waiting for you with their scope trained on you or you're peeking for them. It makes it basically impossible for someone to try killing you, especially in one shot with this build. Sharpshooter and Hunker Down already make snipers fortified and deadly because they make you deal more damage and take less damage. But when you combine that with Never Without One, that makes it even harder for anyone to try counter sniping you because even if they manage to get a headshot on you, which should be the only target available to them, it won't even kill you. And on top of that, you also have that same effect if you're in Deadeye using Slow and Steady. So you might even get protected from two headshots because you could use Never Without One and maybe they take your head off and then you pop into Deadeye and then that second headshot shot doesn't kill you either. So if you've ever come up against someone and you you've you know you've shot them like twice in the head fast and they didn't die, sometimes it's this combo. You first blew their hat off and then the second time they were in dead eye. So as long as you're wearing a hat, the headshots don't kill you outright. That's very very problematic for counter snipers since really the only available target for them and the only possible way to take you out when you're using this build is to wait for you to peek and then try to get you with a headshot. Like I said, this is the best camping turtled sniper build that I've ever found. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you liked this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.